Okay po. Good evening, everyone. It is with great pleasure that I warmly welcome you to this maiden webinar offering of the Philippine Association of Methodist Schools, Colleges, Universities, and Seminaries, or PAMSCUS. Welcome to you, teachers from basic education to higher education, religious educators, school administrators, deaconesses, pastors, our beloved bishops, and to all of you, our participants. The Philippine Association of Methodist Schools, Colleges, Universities, and Seminaries was established in 2014 and held its first General Assembly on September 25 to 27, 2019 in Tagaytay City. The main objective of PAMSCUS is to bring together Methodist educational institutions in the Philippines to rediscover, rekindle, and progressively appropriate the Wesleyan tradition and Wesleyan way of education in all levels by member institutions into the bigger community and society. Our present pandemic situation has created a serious problem in educating our preschool children who have been prevented to go to school and even to church in order to learn the basic foundations of life and growth in community. The PAMSCUS officers sought to address this pressing need and so conceptualized this program living up to our Methodist distinction as pioneers and leaders of kindergarten education in the Philippines. Thus, our webinar this evening is entitled, Crafting the Kindergarten Module, the United Methodist Church Child-Centered Curriculum Design Model. We will start our program this evening with an opening prayer to be led by Bishop Pedro M. Torrio Jr. of the, Mani of the Baguio Episcopal area. Panginoon naman aming Diyos, maray pong salamat sa aming pagtitipon-tipon ngayon upang kami magsanay at mag-aral sa isang webinar na pinangungunahan ng PAMSCUS. Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga educators, mga pastors, deaconesses, mga teachers, school administrators, at mga estudyante na nakilahok sa PAMSCUS webinar na ito. Pinag-prepare po namin ang aming speaker, Dr. Lane Tumamang, at ang lahat ng mga officers ng PAMSCUS Dr. Priscilla Buya, Dr. Christy Manyabat, Prof. Framer Christy Melia, Dr. Estelia Benaventura, Dr. Homer Referso, Dr. Arnaldo Estelia, Dr. Connie Semi Melia, Dr. Eunice Atyanzar, Dr. Priscilla Soriano, at Prof. Roland Annagay. Maraming salamat po sa leadership nila upang patuloy na ma-equip at ma-empower ang lahat ng mga mag-aaral at mga nagtuturo sa aming mga eskwelahan. We pray for your continuing guidance and presence in the Manila Episcopal Area under Bishop Sede Francisco, Davo Episcopal Area under Bishop Rudy Juan, and the Baguio Episcopal Area. Sana po, patuloy kaming magtaisa sa layunin na ibigay namin ang pinakamagandang pagtuturo sa lahat ng aming mga estudyante at leadership sa lahat ng aming mga UMC institutions. Muli, Panginoon, pagpalain po ninyo ang aming speaker, 
si Dr. Lane tumamang na siyang magiging tagapagturo sa amin sa gabing ito. Ang lahat po ng papuri at pasalamat ay binibigyan namin sa inyo ang inyo po sanang Holy Spirit ang siyang manguna sa amin upang sa lahat ng aming gagawin we will worship you and honor you in spirit and in truth. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Tamsko's president will now present the rationale of this webinar. Nangyue. Thank you, uh, Reverend Reverso. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we have been acknowledged so well by uh, Dr. Reverso, and so I will not repeat what he has uh, mentioned earlier. But we are thankful, first, for the support of our bishops. And thank you. Uh, to all the school administrators who have uh, supported us and allowed their teachers to be with us today. And thank you to those who are interested in this webinar uh, and those who have come a long, a long, long way from all over the Philippines to be with us. Parang ang layo, ano? <laughs> It is so nice to see each other. Um, we are here today, tonight rather, because we would like to be true to form. We are Methodist, and Methodists are known for a very distinct program, that of education. And we are known as the initiator, the pioneer of early childhood education. Wherever we see United Methodist Churches, true enough, an early education program will be there along with it. We are known all over the Philippines for this kind of education that we have. Um, I It warms me every time people would come to me and say, Mom, nung bata yung mga anak ko sa inyo nag-aral, and they have turned out to be so good. Napaka, napakalaking bagay nun. But we have come tonight because we would like to continue enhancing our program. We do not stop where we are uh, best at. We want to go on. And that is the nature of education. It goes on. It continues. And even the uh, selection of our uh, webinar title, Crafting a Model Program. You see, we are not just copying, we are not just adapting, we are not just picking up a program, we are crafting it. So it shows that through DNA of Methodist, we do our programs in such a way that it is adjusted to the people that we serve, to the community that we serve. And so true to, true to this DNA form, sabi nga ni uh, Reverend Ripuerso, when we thought of this webinar, it is with great thought, action, and intention that we want to hone up our skills as administrators, as teachers, and crafters of the curriculum. The curriculum keeps on progressing and we won't stop. We won't stop until we can provide the best early childhood education that we can give our people. We come together today to continuously give impetus to our teachers, to continuously encourage them and motivate them, to show the passion that they have always been shown in teaching our uh, small children. And because of this, the PAM schools will always see to it that we will improve and continuously make the most out of our educational institutions. This is just but a beginning. We start with the early uh, childhood education and on to the basic education until 
the last level of education. The point is, education is a continuing process. And I think PAM schools, even if we officers are no longer here, we will continue to upgrade, uphold, and make excellent the true education that we want to, to give. That is who we are, we Methodists. So welcome, welcome sa lahat. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyo. At thank you to uh, the supporters, our prayer uh, partners, and thank you to our speaker tonight. Good evening. Yes, sir. And now we will look at our phone rules, even as uh, <clears throat> the Zoom is uh, new to many of us, I would like us to look at our phone rules. First, I think if you see me, it will be on the screen. It should be projected on your screen. One, introduce yourself when you speak, your name and your Episcopal area. Number two, look directly into the camera rather than at the windows populated by other participants or the image of yourself. Third, stay on mute if you are not talking. <clears throat> Four, don't multitask. Stay focused on the webinar for maximum learning. Show to others that you are listening. Remember that if you are muted while someone else is talking, they won't be able to hear your verbal reactions to anything they are saying. So nonverbal communication is even more important. Six, use the chat, chat function to ask questions. Above all, relax. Zoom meeting gets interrupted sometimes. Be understanding. Let's enjoy our webinar. Thank you. And with that, we will hear our inspirational message from our dear Bishop, Seriaco Francisco of the Manila Episcopal area. Bishop Seri. Greetings of hope in the name of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. First of all, I would like to congratulate the officers of the Philippine Association of Methodist schools, colleges, universities, and seminaries who organized this webinar, which I feel is very important to our school, not only during pandemic, but as we move forward to a new direction. You know, before the opening of classes this school year, the Manila Episcopal Area Cabinet met all the school boards, school administrators, teachers, and deaconesses, and made some consultation with regards to the operation of our schools. And after the consultation, we sponsored several webinars to help our schools in facing the new normal in education. So tonight, uh, Pamascus is doing the same, and I feel it's very important because it helps a lot our school, particularly the basic education. And so, before we continue with our webinar, I was asked to give five-minute inspirational message. Five minutes. I hope I can uh, stick to the time. And I would like to share with you Acts chapter 4, verses 32 and 33. And it says, All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possession was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. 
And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. Friends, this is part of our lectionary reading on Sunday, and it's all related to Easter. Let us go back to Acts chapter 2, where Peter preached a very powerful sermon, and those who heard his message received it by faith, and those who believed were added and gathered together and formed a new community of faith. In chapter 4, there are two things that I'd like to highlight. First, they were of one heart and mind. They were in one accord. All the believers were one in heart and mind in helping the needy members of the new community. They oversee the life condition of the people and see if there are needs to be met. They shared everything that they had. They did not consider their possession as theirs, but of God's, and they serve as stewards. That's important to take note. They sold their possessions and offered the money to the disciples to provide the needs of the community. They were joyful in giving everything they had in life. I think this is something that we need to be reminded again and again. The importance of sharing what we have to the less fortunate in life, the least, the last, and the lost. Upang ang lahat ay may makain at mabuhay ng marangal sapagkat iyan ang layunin ng Diyos. Let's pray that all of us will learn during this time of pandemic the importance of being one in heart and mind in helping the needy and sharing what God has entrusted unto us. What you're doing now is part of it. You share your talent, you share your time, you share your resources, and you share everything to help one another especially our schools, to cope up with the challenges of the new education. Secondly, they share the power of the resurrection. Dr. Luke presented in the book of Acts the impact of the resurrection in the life of the disciples and in the life of the new community. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit descended upon them, they became powerful and unstoppable witness or witnesses to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. In chapter 3, as they entered the temple to pray, they saw a lame, a lame beggar asking for alms. But Peter, instead of giving him money, raised him in the name of Jesus and he was healed. All the people, including the priests, the captains of the temple, and the Sadducees were all amazed, and Peter took that opportunity to testify on the account of the resurrection. They became very powerful witnesses of the resurrection. Ang pundasyon ng ating pananampalataya at saliga ng ating pag -asa. Friends, as we continue to fight with the killer COVID-19, let us be one in heart and mind, helping one another to continue witnessing the power of Christ's resurrection, our hope, and our victory in this life here and now. May God continuously bless you as you continue to serve God and His people. Amen and Amen. Again, good evening everyone. Good evening everyone. Thank you, Bishop, for uh, that inspiring message. Now, uh, 
Our PAMSCO's Coordinator of Basic Education, Dr. Eunice Achensar, will introduce our resource person, Dr. Achensar. Magandang gabi po sa kanilang lahat, mga kapatid. Good evening, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Our highly esteemed bishops of the Philippines, Bishop Seri Francisco, Bishop Rudy Juan, and Bishop Pet Torrio, the members of the clergy, officers and members of PAMSCO's Philippine Association of Methodist Schools, colleges, universities, and seminaries. My fellow educators, warm greetings to all. Our resource speaker hails from the province of Isabella, a daughter of the late Reverend and Mrs. Primitivo Tandayo, a retired district superintendent of the Isabella North District under the North Central Philippines Annual Conference. She is a forever deaconess by heart who obtained the degree of Bachelor of Kindergarten Education at Harris Memorial College in 1985 and Doctor of Philosophy, major in Educational Management at Northeastern College, San Diego City in 2001. Her profession and career in early childhood education was honed at Harris Memorial College and partly her training and teaching experience in a Montessori school at White Plains, Quezon City. Most of her years of service as a full-time deaconess was spent at Harris Memorial College in Manila and Taytay Rizal. She became a nursery kindergarten teacher at Harris for five years and later became the Dean for Academic Affairs from 2006 to 2011. During her stint as Dean at Harris, she was able to upgrade the accreditation status of the Bachelor of Kindergarten Education, Bachelor of Elementary Education, Early Childhood Education programs to Level 3 accreditation status, and Level 2 for the ABCE program in 2008 by the Association of Christian Schools, Colleges, and Universities, accrediting Agency Incorporated. At present, she is connected with Northeastern College, Santiago City, who has been given various academic functions, such as Research Director, K-12 Principal, Outreach Coordinator, and as Professor in the College of Education, and Research Advisor in the Graduate School. As to church and community involvement, she became the choir director of Santiago City UMC, the church council chairperson, and school administrator of Ilagan City UMC, and at present, the board of trustees chairperson of the Ilagan United Methodist Nursery Kindergarten School Incorporated. Also, she is preheaded the establishment of Christian Shane Funville Youth Foundation funded by a philanthropist couple from UMC Abilene, Texas, United States of America in 2017. Her thinking and feeling of self-actualization were fulfilled through her deep passion and involvement in church work and in academic work which made her fully satisfied with great joy and thanksgiving to God. Brothers and sisters, my pleasure 
to introduce to you our resource person this evening, the first ever conducted webinar sponsored by PAMSCUS, Dr. Lane Tandayo Tumamang. Dr. Tandayo. Good evening. Good evening. I am so happy to see all of you via Zoom. You know, especially to all the church workers, my fellow uh, teachers, administrators, okay, in the United Methodist Church. I am aware that uh, there are four groups of uh, participants tonight uh, pastors, deaconesses, uh, non. non uh, uh, deaconesses teachers in our school and some are lay you no know, lay uh, uh, administrators of our school thank you very much for uh, responding to our uh, invitation for this uh, um, endeavor you no know, crafting the kindergarten module uh, sir noel can they see the the uh, slide on screen. Nakikita po ba? Okay. So ito po tayo. Okay. Uh, next, next slide, please. Okay, let me start with uh, a quotation from Sir Alvin Toffler saying, the illiterate of the first century will, will not be those who can read and write, but those who cannot learn and learn and relearn. Sarah Toffler was a philosopher and futurist educator. If I were to uh, analyze the statement in my point of view as uh, an early childhood uh, education educator, this would mean that the most literate people, group of people in our society in this 21st century are the young children because of their innate and great capacity to learn and learn and relearn, whereby let the children be our model in learning, always willing to learn and learn and relearn, just like what we will be doing tonight. So welcome to the world of children. Okay. Uh, okay, next slide, please. So there are five topics that I want to share to you tonight. Uh, first is the overview of the learner, the learner-centered uh, curriculum design model, contents of the standards-based child-centered curriculum, types and contents of uh, the modules, guidelines in writing the kindergarten modules, and then uh, sample of the kindergarten modules. We have samples already uh, written by our deaconesses in my conference. And uh, the three of them will be sharing you know, because they are the writers of these three uh, of our fellow deaconesses. Uh, first uh, presenter will be uh, teacher uh, Jemari uh, Bidosa, who wrote the first module, the contents. She will uh, share to you orally the contents of this module and uh, uh, the process of writing this module. And then the second is teacher uh, Frian no, uh, Padron. She will share to you the process in the implementation of this uh, module. And the third is uh, teacher uh, uh, Christina Inis Banyas, uh, who will be sharing the feedbacks uh, of the uh, uh, parent chooser 
of this uh, curriculum. So pilot testing, because this is very important. The curriculum must be pilot tested before uh, it will be utilized by many. So ito po yung group. So uh, there were many teachers before. I'm so sorry kasi hindi ko po pinayagan na ito ay ma-share kasi this is raw. Uh, ano pa ito eh? There are a lot of things to be uh, edited uh, content and at the same time yung language. So uh, uh, kumbaga this is uh, exclusively used by our uh, kindergarten uh, writers here in my conference. So these are the things that I want to share to you tonight. Okay, next slide please. Okay, before uh, I uh, discuss uh, thoroughly the learner-centered curriculum, let me brief you of the three types of curriculum. There are only three types of curriculum design. The first is the subject-centered curriculum design. This is most commonly used worldwide, particularly in the elementary, high school, and college. No? Kasi subjects ang itinuturo nila, kaya subject-centered. No? And then the second is this one, the learner-centered uh, curriculum design, of course, uh, suited and used in early childhood education because we are not teaching subjects. We are educating the whole child. So uh, learner-centered. No? This is our curriculum model. Okay, and then the, the next, uh, mamaya na, mamaya pa po yan. Okay, dyan lang muna. Okay, uh, and the third design is problem-centered design. This is suited for graduate studies. Problem kasi, so it's research-based. So these are the three curriculum, or uh, three types of curriculum. Now, what is what are the philosophical views of this learner-centered? Okay, this is very, uh, common to many teachers. This is kumbaga, the flower of the mouth of all teachers. That the learner is the center of the educative process. Okay, both uh, uh, all this uh, curriculum uh, design believe on this kind of philosophy. Okay, but in early childhood education, it's totally different. So what, what does it mean when we say the child is the center of the educative process? So everything that they do, that they see, that they feel in school are designed for them, you know, suited for them. So that is the meaning of that for their holistic development. So this is the, the goal, the ultimate goal of this uh, design is educating the whole child. No? That's why we focused on the domains of development. So what are these domains of development? There are five major domains, the physical, mental, social, emotional, and moral. Of course, in moral, intertwined with spiritual development. Okay. So um, if this is our view of our belief, then it must be manifested in the school. Pagpasok mo pa lang sa classroom, ay alam mo na na yan ay child-centered talaga by merely looking at the learning facilities. Okay? So the, the best uh, okay, manifestation of this philosophy is through the learning environment in the school and outside the school. Okay, next. Next. Uh, okay. No, okay. So the proponents of this, of course, uh, many proponents, but of course, uh, we recognize John Dewey as uh, the proponent of progressive education the father of uh, pragmatic education, the only American educational philosopher in the 19th century that influenced worldwide, you know, our education worldwide, and uh, renowned 
psychologists like uh, Jean Piaget, the father of, kinder, uh, of cognitive development, Lev Vygotsky, the father of uh, social cognitive uh, development, uh, the, the theory of uh, importance of adults in helping the, the young learners to learn. And then Howard Gardner, of course, the, the author of Multiple Intelligences, and Abraham uh, Maslow, the, the author of uh, The Hierarchy of Needs, and many others. So what does it mean when we say progressive education? No? Um, it emphasizes experience and the uh, ability to the capability to adapt to any given situation through problem solving so ito po yung ibig sabihin uh, we learn best through experience and then the the cap capability of human beings to always adapt to any given situation through our higher order thinking skills Okay, decision making, uh, critical thinking, reflective thinking, analytical thinking, decision making, and problem solving skill. That's why this pandemic, we are able to adapt you know, with this uh, situation. Uh, we have learned many things uh, out of this uh, given situation. You know? Ako na lang eh, ang dami kong natutunan. Natutunan kong gumawa ng module. No? And uh, natutunan kong mag-Lazada, no? uh, yung mag-online. I never <laughs> did this before. Hindi ko pinapansin ang Lazada na yan. But now, uh, most of, uh, you know, yung pagbili-bili na lang is through Lazada. No? Kasi ito yung tinatawag na pragmatic education. The, yung adaptation to the environment no? in order to cope in order to cope with a particular problem or situation. No? So ito yung ibig sabihin niya. Okay, next. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, what is, okay, the pedagog pedagogical approach of this uh, pragmatic education. In the 21st century education, this is our approach. Both uh, lahat po ng types of curriculum design, we use this approach, constructivism approach. And what is the meaning of this? Learners actively create, construct meanings and understanding in the teaching learning process. So actively create and construct. So ibig sabihin nun, the teacher is merely a facilitator. So uh, no pasay na ang lecture or discussion. No, It's more on activity based. And based from this activity, they construct their own knowledge to give meaning and understanding to what they are learning. No? So, uh, yun. So, ito ay, uh, uh, ano itawag dito? Uh, let the children construct their own concept out of their experiences. Not the teacher, uh, kumbaga, uh, giving the information. So, bawal na bawal po sa constructivism, yung feeding. No? You just, you are just feeding information to children. So let's talk more, more talk on the part of the learners, more activities on the part of the learners. Okay, next. Next slide. Okay. What are the teaching uh, approaches of this constructivism? First is discovery learning. This is the best way children learn through trial and trial and error in, in their exploration no so exploration kasi kaya nga uh, they are called little scientists children are little scientists because they discover a lot no they manipulate a lot but with with closer supervision 
no by the teacher or parents kasi this is very dangerous nakak maraming namamatay na mga bata because of this nature of children no because that is their innate nature they want to learn the what the how and everything in this world so they want to discover things but among young children we have to supervise carefully their their play no kasi they learn through play so this that is part of discovery exploration in the natural environment okay next is the hands on or uh, first hand learning experiences these are is somewhat related this to discovery but more of teacher facilitated the learning activities that are first hand you know like uh, field trips you no know? first hand yun kasi na andun sila and some uh, creative activities wherein they could really uh, understand a particular uh, concept like uh, when you teach uh, the concept of oxygen to kindergartners ay uh, oxygen is uh, kahit na anong explanation mo sa oxygen yan hindi maintindihan hanggang hindi niya nararanasan kung ano yung sinasabi mo so instead of explaining talking to children okay let them experience yung what is this no oxygen okay so yung simulated activity na ginagawa natin to kindergarten uh, teachers you know this already but i just want to share no see uh, i use this kind of uh, activity when i thought about the importance of plants no? so they give oxygen so ang ginagawa ko noon ay uh, pinapa dun sa loob ng classroom pinapatay ko lahat yung electric fan and then close all the windows and the door and so i ask them what do you feel how do you feel definitely they will say maini teacher no and after that then you go let the children okay uh, you you and the children will okay go to a place where there are trees no kaya sa eskwelahan dapat may natural eh. just like in japan ang talagang malawak ang kanilang lugar no where there is natural environment so dapat sa schools natin there are trees there are plants no so let them stay under the shade of a tree like a mango tree or basta yung maraming dahon okay and let them feel no the ano yun? the fresh air so definitely ano, so you just facilitate so what do you feel now children huh? so teacher uh, masarap ang hangin malamig okay so saan kaya nang gagaling yun so yun na yun so just facilitate that then definitely they will say teacher kanin dito sa sa puno okay so you now say that you know the cold you no know, air coming from trees is called oxygen okay so oxygen so what is oxygen so based from that experience they can now create construct meaning of the concept of oxygen so instead of saying the meaning to them let them define the meaning describe the the meaning of oxygen and of course able to understand the importance of trees and plants so these are this is just one sample of first hand learning experience okay the second is cooperative learning of course ito yung gustong gusto ng mga bata and even uh, you know uh, all students in college they love this young learning in small group you no know? uh, cooperative learning because learning is good when they there it's enjoyable there is no pressure at all there is no competition at all so among children they don't like competition especially young children to older child learners yes you no know? elementary high school gusto gusto nila yan but in here they love to learn in small group or bigger groups okay now individualized instruction individualized instruction is totally different from tutorial follow up or remedial okay 
uh, Montessori, uh, this is the, the primary uh, method of Montessori, individualized instruction through the materials and the environment. Walang group lesson sa Montessori, it's highly individualized because of course, Montessori is, uh, was originally uh, intended for the mentally retarded, not for the normal children. And the materials in the environment are for the mentally retarded uh, children. Okay, in the universal kindergarten approach, how do we use individualized instruction? I've uh, I've learned this from, of course, Mrs. Juan when she I was a preschool teacher at Harris. She was our uh, supervisor. So individualized instruction is when you teach subjects the your cognitive domain, especially three R's. Now, if you want the learners to learn fast, then you emphasize individualized instruction, especially in writing and reading what is the 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 principle behind this you no know, that the learner has its own mental abilities ability so some are slow learner some are uh, average and some are bright so you have to teach where the child is this is addressing their needs for learning because uh, some children, when they enter uh, nursery, kindergarten, they, are, they know some basic concepts already like shapes, uh, names of letters, and some are uh, uh, even sounds. So, naturoan na sila. So, wag mo nang uulitin yun. You have to start where the child is and this is the principle behind it, you have to address the needs for learning of every child, particularly in reading and writing. And I also observe this when I was a student at Harris, uh, sa international school sa Makati. Now, while having a group lesson, a teacher, another teacher uh, came in and then uh, uh, detached one child from the group and then taught taught reading and writing kasi highly highly individualized in two way ang ang this three no kaya hindi ako naniniwala na magtatapos ang isang bata sa kindergarten program na hindi natutong sumulat at bumasa kapabayaan yun ng isang teacher o lahat na lang ay puro group lesson how about a child who cannot uh, learn in group who cannot participate in group because of hyperactivity, because of lack of attention and hyper, merong paga ADD. No? So, but when you do individualized instruction, you know, children love to be with the teacher. No, na experience ko yan, nag-uunahan ang mga bata na teacher, ako din, gusto, ako din turuan mo din. No? Because they love their teacher, they, they idolize their teacher, so they love this, no? individualized instruction. But you can only do individualized instruction if you have an assistant. No? May assistant ka dapat, and then uh, you have to yung limit, limit the number of, of, of pupils or hindi limit yun eh. You have to follow the ideal class size. For nursery, uh, one is to five, maximum is 10. For nursery, one yan, for three-year-old. For four-year-old, uh, one is to 10 to 15. Then five-year-old, one is to 20. Pag 25, kailangan meron ng assistant. And you can only employ this uh, method during free guided play no other children are playing in the different areas and then some children and then you have to do some ii so at least the isang linggo naturuan mo lahat ang bata na pagdating at the end of the school year napakahusay bumasa sumulat ang mga bata to the normal children okay Next is differentiated instruction. 
uh, the same. We can only employ this if we have different learning areas and uh, varied learning facilities uh, in the preschool, elementary, and high school. The, the purpose of this is uh, to develop the talents, abilities, and multiple intelligences of the learners. Okay, our goal now is not only to educate the mind, to develop the mind. We want to develop the talents, special abilities of children, because according to psychologists, you know, educators, being bright, you know, being an A student, you no, know, a laude summa cum laude does not measure success in life. It's how you utilize your talents and abilities to improve your life because the ultimate goal of education is to make men better, do better in life. So kahit na anong taas ng pinag-aralan mo kung hindi naging maayos, naging maunlad ang buhay mo, it's useless. So how? Through ano, the use of these potentials. Just like example na lang si Manny Pacquiao abay nagyumaman at nagkilala sa buong mundo because of his multiple intelligence on kinesthetic. No? So this is now the focus of the curriculum, the development of the potentials, talents, and abilities of the learners and to make use of these talents to improve their life. So hindi tayo sa academic lang. No? Yung, yung madalas na awa ako sa mga even teachers, even administrators, and the parents who focus so much on academics. No? Uh, I feel pity no? to this uh, group of people who are very you know, grade conscious or academic. No? Yun lang ang uh, focus. Nasasabi nila, ay, ang galing na eskwelahan niyan kasi ang mga anak namin ganito, ganito. No? It's not. No? Hindi yun yung totoong mahusay na eskwelahan. Okay? And of course, the last is technology-based no? instruction. This is now a requirement of the 21st Ed century education technology so every classroom uh, should be installed with television and with wi-fi because uh children we learn a lot from the internet no? everything that we want to know it's in the internet so ito yung requirement na ngayon no yung technology in the classroom okay next Okay, so there are three approaches to uh, learner-centered uh, curriculum design. Okay, the first is the child-centered design, no, uh, influenced by Rusu, Pestalozzi, Probel, and John Dewey's educational theories and principles. They were the proponents of child-centered education, no, especially Rusu, no, but purist yan si Rusu, no. And uh, Pestalot's uh, purist na um, child-centered. Ang hindi naging maganda kay Russo noon, yung kasi sabi, he believed on the natural unfolding of on the growth and development of uh, children in the environment. They learn through uh, uh, their natural environment without any inter intervention from adults. So pinag-experimentohan niya yung kanyang anak at the age of 12, hindi pa natuto ang anak na bumasa, sumulat kasi, no intervention at all for laling total, kumbaga total naman na, na, na yung natural unfolding on the growth and development of a child. So and then, but he was the first who emphasized child-centered education. Pestalozzi was the father of uh, de human development and an avid predecessor of, of Rousseau. Then Frobel, we know Frobel, the father of uh, kindergarten uh, education in the world no? uh, from Germany. Now, uh, there are three methods used by Frobel based on his theory. There are only three methods, Jan, and we are still 
uh, employing this no, in our school, especially in the Methodist school, especially at Harris. No? Uh, learning through play, learning through the manipulation of concrete objects and socialization. So ito yung three methods of focus no, on sa learning. Okay, <clears throat> next. Next slide. Okay, based on this uh, view, the curriculum is viewed as the total learning experiences provided to the learners geared towards the development of the whole child. So you, when, we, when we think of curriculum, immediately we think of subjects. That is not, no, based on the progressive view of curriculum, it's the total learning experiences of the child. Yun yung una kong nasabi kanina. Everything that they do, they see, they feel, they touch in school, it's, that is the curriculum. No? So, uh, hidden, the policies, the practices, part of the curriculum. The materials, part of the curriculum. No? Uh, so, ito yun. No? Kaya sa loob at sa labas ng eskwelahan, part yun ng curriculum. The way we talk to the children, the way we relate to the children, part of the curriculum. Okay, so this is the view, the progressive view of curriculum. Total learning experiences provided to the learners, geared towards their holistic development. Okay, next. Okay, what is the primary method? Okay. Learning by doing or first-hand learning experiences in the natural environment, in the real world, and prepared learning environment you know, provided by the school. So this is highly progressive philosophy, learning by doing by Jean, uh, by doing, you no? Know? John Dewey, okay? At talaga naman lahat tayo eh, kahit hindi lang sa bata eh, sa kahit sa matatanda, eh talagang we learn best by doing. Uh, iba yung ikaw mismo, no? Uh, when uh, when I was at Harris in 2006, uh, I wanted to drive, no? A Harris to, ano ito, ano? SM, SM Mega Mall. No, sa Pasig. So what I did was, of course, I can already uh, uh, drive, you know, uh, dito mula probinsya hanggang Manila, kaya ko na yun. Pero yung sa Metro Manila, hindi ko pa alam kasi hindi mo talaga ma-drive kahit anong galing mo. Kung hindi mo alam yung mga lugar, streets, you will not know. So what I did was, of course, nag-commute nag -commute ng jeep, tinandaan ko uh, yung mga daan, then bumaba ako sa SM Mega Mall. Hindi ako nakontento. Talagang nilakad ko, inikot ko ang buong Pasig Center para matutunan ko yung mga streets doon para kapag nag-drive ako, alam ko kung saan dadaan. That is first-hand learning experience. Learning by doing. Okay? Not only to children, but to adults. Okay? Next. Okay. So uh, this is the role of the teacher. No? Learners interact with the teacher as a facilitator of learning in the environment. As mentioned earlier, less talk on the part of the teacher, more talk and activities on the part of the learners in the basic education, yan, in preschool, elementary, and high school. Okay? So hayaan mong mga bata, um, the learners ang magsalita, no? And then do some activities. And from that activity, they will construct uh, concepts and understand meaning of the concepts that you want them to learn, okay? So avoid discussion. Kapag nakita ko na sa lesson plan ang discussion, ako'y naiirita. No? Kasi ang discussion eh, lalo na sa mga bata, younger children never use discussion as a method. No? Uh, kasi less, less learning, you are just wasting. You're wasting your time. Okay? And uh, 
learning is the product of the child's interaction with the learning environment through play. So of course, in sa preschool yan, the, the, through play, the, the world of children is play. Ta, huwag niyong tanggalin ang play sa buhay nila. What is play to children? Anything that they do with enjoyment, with satisfaction and fulfillment. No? So yun, that is the meaning of play. It's hindi games, no? Play. It can be a teacher, uh, it can be structured play or natural play. So ito yun. But what is learning? No, madalas ito yung wrong, wrong uh, misconception of uh, learners. No? Yung sa true or false. Uh, learning is merely an acquisition of knowledge, skills, and values. True or false? Karamihan ng may estudyante, true. It's false. Because learning is, the meaning of learning is a relatively change in the behavior of an individual as a result of his interaction with the environment. That is the meaning of learning. It's not acquisition of knowledge, skills, and values. Acquisition is the process of learning. But learning, the meaning of learning, is change in the behavior. So without change, there is no learning. And when we say behavior, we are talking of the domains of learning, the, cogn the cognitive, affective, and psychomotor, psychomotor knowledge, skills, and values. These are the behavior. And how? How are these chains through their interaction with the environment? Interaction experience. We are through their experience with the learning environment. No? As I have mentioned a while ago, learning environment is the natural environment of the child or real world of the child in the home, school, community, and prepared learning environment by the school. These are now the different learning uh, materials you know, provided to the learners. Okay, next. Okay, the second, the second uh, design is experience-centered design. This is uh, the same as child-centered. You know? The same uh, view of the curriculum it's the total learning experiences of the child for his or her holistic development okay next slide please okay so but the difference of child-centered and experience-centered in the child-centered is it's more of teacher facilitated learning activities so nag, ang teacher ang mas maraming uh, uh, yung pag-facilitate. So more on structured learning. No? But in here, it's unstructured. No? The experiences of the child in a well-prepared learning environment are the starting point of the curriculum. No? So it's unplanned because the curriculum is the learning environment itself. Yun yun, this is this experience. No? Yung curriculum mismo ay yung learning environment. Yun mismo yung pag-aaralan ng mga bata. Kaya unplanned, unplanned siya. So yun yung starting point. You start where, so uh, uh, be, before the, the end of the session, you have to parang magkaroon ng evaluation of what they have learned you know, individually. No, out of that. Okay, so how? Ito yon. Let's uh, let's uh, next slide, please. Okay, so ito yung prepared learning environment. The indoor and outdoor learning areas provide for meaningful and enjoyable learning experiences among young children in gaining concepts, skills, and
Pagkita yung learner-centered no? curriculum. Ah, yun na yung child set. Oh, and a lot of, uh, you know, posted, uh, you know, uh, pictures on the wall and hanging no? on the ceiling na forever mula June hanggang March. Yun at yun ang nakikita. This is not a child-centered curriculum or philosophy. It's traditional. We call that traditional no? Ngayon, less, uh, we avoid, in preschool, we avoid pictures anymore. Pasay ng pictures. Instead of using pictures, use the, the video. No? So, less na, wala ka, uh, sa Montessori, bawal ang pictures, no? Baka hindi nagpapaskil. And if you are at Harris, wala din kayong masyadong nakikita na nakapaskil ng mga pictures. This, you know, yung marami yan eh. eh sa Harris, kompleto yan. Or, and language area, reading and language area, math area, mathematics, science area, social studies area, writing and creative arts area, building blocks. This is very important, building blocks. Uh, then housekeeping and creative dramatics area, music and movement areas. Ito yung dapat nakikita. Kaya ang classroom size ng, ng preschool, malaki yan. You know? uh, if I were to remember, 20 to 25 square feet per child. So, uh, mga 10 by 15 or 18 yan, no, square meters. So, it should be uh, you know, uh, rectangular, not uh, square shape. No, Mal maluwang siya to accommodate all the learning areas. Because in here, the curriculum itself are the materials in the environment. They learn through manipulation of concrete objects. What is the philo the principle behind this? Now we learn we learn best through the money through the use of our senses. That is the the principle. We learn best through the use of our senses, especially sense of touch. Huh? Okay, now the indoor indoor learning areas, ito yung mga yon, playground, no? yung lahat ng equipment for the development of the physical, uh, the, the motor uh, uh, coordination muscles of the children with sand. No? Be sure na yung playground ay nakapatong doon yung, yung may sand siya para safe. No? One time when I uh, uh, ano ito? disseminated a survey, research survey in my uh, doctorate program sa dissertation ko na yun noon, meron akong nakita na isang school, Methodist school, na yung playground sinumentohan. Oh, very dangerous. That is very dangerous. No? Yung sisementuhan mo ang playground, nangtug na, no? Ang mga bata, mamamatay ang mga bata, no? Never do this, no? The, the ideal is the playground is uh, na, na, sand. It's sand, no? Yung uh, fine sand where they can play. Or kung walang sand man, it's grass, carabao grass, no? Uh, para maging safe sa mga bata, no? So complete the playground equipment with sand because they learn, they will learn a lot from sand. And children love sand, no? They can, uh, you know, uh, playing out of sand and this is scientific, good for the body, okay? So develop yung creativity, problem solving when they play with sand. Okay, plants. There must be plants, kaya ang requirement na yun, noon, before ha, yung, yung lot area of a school is 500 square meters. But in the new uh, 
ano ito yung manual of regulations for private uh, basic education it's not no hectar na ang requirement ngayon but before it's 500 square meters because in the school you kailangan there is natural world no there are trees plants no and then uh, may pets pa kung maari no pets kasi gusto gusto ng bata ang ang animals okay then carpentry tools na yung laruan no where they will do some carpentry works no they love to do this will toys no for the development of their muscles uh, trampoline no mahal nga lang ang mga ito no very expensive no uh, trampoline uh, for children balancing beams obstacle tires so these are the learning areas no uh, so ito, try to evaluate our schools no, in the methodist as known as the pioneer in early childhood education do we have these learning areas kokonte no sa high school lang nakita at sa mga of course uh, mayamang eskwelahan many of our schools we do not have this even here in our school i am the the incumb uh, incumbent uh, school um, a chairperson of the school board but still i could not uh, employ this number one yung classroom napakaliit yung size niya is six by eight 48 square meters so it's a small room how can you uh, provide these areas with that kind of classroom so we'll have that and then uh, yun nga, yung lack of materials no? for the total development of the child Okay, so this is our, this is a challenge to us, no? Methodist known as the pioneer in kindergarten education in the Philippines. We have to prove this kind of, kumbaga, legacy and the niche. No? Kilala tayo sa early childhood education, but do we really uh, manifest this kind of, of education, no? holistic education to our learners. Okay, next. Okay, so this is how they, the children uh, use the learning environment. Learners are made to choose their own learning activities from the different learning areas with varied kinds of instructional materials, equipment and tools. If possible, concrete models. Less pictures, pasay na ang picture, no? Models, no? And real, yeah. Yung mga, mga hindi na functional na, na what, instead of buying yung clock na yung nabibili na pagka mahal-mahal, eh yung mga hindi na nagagamit na, na clock, then dalhin sa eskwenahan. These are real, yeah. Not functional, but still complete. So you can still use this for instruction. Uh, where they can manipulate. Remember, we learn best through touch, no? by doing, not by seeing, not by hearing, but by doing. How? Through the manipulation of concrete objects, no? varied objects. Okay, next. Okay. Because they focus more on experience, so longer block of time. This this uh, model, experience kasi based, no uh, experience center center design. So longer block of time is allotted for free guided play in the different learning areas by 45 minutes to one hour. When I was a preschool teacher at Harris, this was our curriculum design through the supervision of Mrs. Wan. So I am very familiar of this curriculum design, experience-based. And I've mastered this uh, design when I taught in a Montessori school. Okay, next. In here, the teacher closely supervises and monitors the development of each child through their play in the different learning environment. No? So, 
this is the bulk of work on the part of the teacher. Mas maraming oras nga ng paglalaro ng mga bata, but you have to closely monitor and supervise their play. Hindi pwedeng nakaupo ka lang. If possible, join them in their learning. Yung kumbaga, yung in-player ka, kasama ka doon sa kanilang laro, sa kanilang pag-aaral. That is the role of the teacher. No? And while doing that, you are supervising them no? in everything. So when they play the different areas, all the aspects of development are already touched, are developed. No? Kaya highly integrative ang, ang uh, preschool natin. Integrative. Intertwined. You, in their play sa, sa uh, environment nila, you are now developing the whole child. Especially, so if you want to develop yung, yung critical thinking, decision making, and problem solving among child, children, let them play in the building blocks. Let them play with Lego, uh, with uh, puzzles. Kasi, uh, ano yun eh, yung mind talagang, yung higher order thinking skills are being developed. And this is our goal in learning. No? Yung develop, especially in the 20, 21st century, we want to develop the higher order thinking skills of our learners. What are these higher? No, first is yung, uh, of course, I, I want to mention the hierarchy of uh, these cognitive processes. No, Yung lower thinking skills are perception, that is the lowest, perception, attention, memory, and language. Language belongs to the lower thinking skills. Although a language is the primary tool for learning, but it belongs to to lower thinking skills. Now, higher order thinking skills are first reasoning. So what are these skills in reasoning? Uh, analytical, critical, reflective thinking. No? Ito yun, logical reasoning. So these are these uh, reasoning skills. And then the next level is decision making and the highest uh, level of learning or thinking is problem solving. So in their play, we are developing the higher order thinking skills of the learners. When you focus more on academics, you are just developing the lower thinking skills of the learners. Okay. Okay, next slide. Okay, so what are the primary assessment tools? Of course, number one, observation. We have to closely observe each child in their total development. No? And then anecdotal record, so yung behavior of the child, specifically significant behavior of the child, no? you have to record it. Then teacher made individualized uh, activity sheets. No? Uh, kasi may workbook naman eh, yung, so yun na yun, no? common, but this time you have to uh, make teacher, uh, made individualized uh, assessment tools to address yung individualized instruction. No? So yun, no? kailangan gan Ang, ang pag-rate natin sa bata is progressive scheme, no? Hindi, we do not compare. We just think of the child when we evaluate them. No? So provide individualized activity sheets. Do not, wag kayong makontento dun sa workbooks. Kasi the, the, the individualized activity sheets is a true kind of assessment for every child. So although this is quite expensive, nakakapagod sa teacher, but very uh, uh, meaningful, useful, no? and beneficial to the learners. Okay, next is child's performance evidences of learning. Of course, ito yun. Every child must have, have uh, individual daily progress record. So in their play, you have to, in their, in their play, in the individualized instruction, you have to record what they have learned. No? 
kaya dapat may logbook ang teacher. There is a logbook, and then nakasulat doon yung what they have learned for this week. No, example shapes. Kung natutunan nila yun na yung shapes sa under mathematics, so you have to write those. No, yung shapes they have learned, numbers or in reading, ganon sa writing, especially in three Rs and other other. Cognitive domains of development. So you, ito yung dapat na meron tayo, no? Individual daily progress record, and then their portfolio, their performances, no? Their product, product, no? And the progress report checkings. I will further explain this later, no? So yung progress report checklist, san manggagal niyan from the individual. Daily progress record. Para kapag uh, nag-assess ka na sa bata, hindi yung na hindi ka na hihirapan, na iniisip mo pa ano ba itong batang ito, ano ba ang irerey ko sa kanya, ano na ba yung alam niya? Kasi nga wala kang record eh. Kaya you do not yung 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 rating of the children is not really accurate because you don't have a record, no? So you must have a record of this. So this is a uh, experience-centered design model. Very expensive on the part of the school. Tiring on the part of the teacher, but very meaningful on the part of the learners. Meaningful, useful, and true kind of addressing their needs for learning when we do this thing. Okay, next, next design is humanistic design no? okay uh, the same the, the the same view of the curriculum the total learning experiences provided to the learners which are planned in and planned no geared toward the development of the whole child so this thing okay, next but what is the difference of this the difference is this no? Okay, of course, this the, the design, curriculum design is influenced by uh, Maslow and Carl Rogers, no? emphasizing yung self-actualization and development of the self, positive self-image, positive self-concept. If you want a person, if you want to be happy in life, then you have to be self-actualized. You have to have good concept of yourself. Kawawa ka naman kung ang, ang, ang tingin mo sa sarili mo ay negative. Ang number one na kaaway mo, sarili mo. So this is your number one enemy is yourself if you develop negative self-image. And what is self-actualization? You know, finding the true meaning of your life in this world. The purpose of your life in this world. You know? The feeling of of uh, success, fulfillment out of your effort making capacity through your special talents and abilities, no? attaining, yung developing yourself to the fullest, no? having, having a, uh, ano ito? a fully satisfied life no? with dignity, with success, and with happiness. Okay, so ito yung focus. No? Ito yung uh, uh, ano ito, theory behind this humanistic design. Okay, next, please. Okay, so in the teaching and learning process, it focuses on the psychosocial development or the social and emotional development of the child through socialization and development of talents, abilities, and potentials of the learners. No? to become self-actualized, become happy individuals in the society. No? Yung, uh, kumbaga, developing the mind, the body, uh, the, the mind, the heart, feeling, thinking, no? uh, and uh, the whole uh, being of a child, particularly on the social and emotional development. Okay, next. So the ultimate goal of this uh, curriculum design is to develop 
positive self concepts and interpersonal skills of the learners. So we are through with the three approaches to learner-centered design. The first is child learner-centered design. Second is experience-centered design. And the third, humanistic design. Now at Harris, we employ all these designs. Kaya ang tawag eclectic no? curriculum design. Ito yung pag sa Harris ka talaga nagturo, ito yun ang Harris na tatak. Ang nakakalungkot ay paglabas na, nawala na yung tatak ng Harris. <laughs> nawala na. Influence na ng other, other philosophies. No? So, but this is the, the ano ito, unique, no? um, unique and identity of Harris, known as the pioneer in early childhood education in the Philippines, particularly kindergarten education. Yeah. Okay, next. Now we now move on to the second topic, which is contents of the standard-based uh, child-centered education. The K-12 curriculum is highly standard-based. I came to know this, uh, this uh, kind of curriculum when I was at Harris as Dean in 2010. I was able to buy a book worth 10,000 for the library uh, with this kind of book, no, standard-based no, curriculum, uh, curriculum design. And in 2012, this was uh, implemented. So I am familiar with this already since 2010. No? And so these are the contents of the standard-based. No? First is the curriculum content or the unit of study stated in a broad you know, statement. Example in kindergarten, reading, visual perception and discrimination. You know? So this is the content or curriculum content. Next, number two is the content uh, standards or curriculum standards. These are broad statement of goals that describe specific content areas to be learned at, e at its grade level or program about the subject, okay? You can see this in the sample curriculum of the K-12 Harris curriculum. No? Makikita natin lahat yan, no? uh, If you have a copy of that. Next, okay, so this is the sample. Okay, recognize picture symbols, words, uh, words and symbols. No? Recognize picture symbols, words and, and symbols based on that uh, uh, content, uh, content area. Then second, the third is performance standards. No? These are specific statements of what the learners be, should be able to do based on the content standards or the curriculum standards. So do what the learners will be able to do. It's more on product. It's more on performance. Kaya siya nga performance standards. Okay? So classify is the child will be able to do. Classify. No? Okay? Real objects, pictures according to their kind. Okay, next, learning competencies. No? So these are the desired concepts and skills and values that the learner should be able to acquire, demonstrate, and do no? based on the curriculum standards after the end of the course or uh, subject area. So ito na yun, yung kabuuan na ng natutunan ng bata at the end of the program of at the end of the course or the subject. No? So competencies, it's broader. No? You, the coverage is broader. It's no longer skills like performance standards, but concepts and values. Okay, the next, the last is the, okay, tapos na po tayo. So those are the contents. You can see this. So ito po yun, uh, the comparison of uh, the kindergarten curriculum based on domains of development by DepEd and Harris. No? So there are seven domains of development 
health, sa DepEd, health, well-being, and motor development. Second is social-emotional development. Third is language, literacy, and communication. Fourth, mathematics. And uh, fifth, understanding the self. Uh, uh, the, the I think the understanding the natural environment. Okay. In here at Harris, there are there are six six puyan physical development. Okay, understanding the physical and natural world. Okay, shun puyan. So physical development, health and safety, emotional and social development, others, ang tawag dito, uh, personal and social development, then cognitive development, language and communication development, and literacy, creative development, and the last is spiritual development and values formation. So this is uh, the depth ed and Harris curriculum are called prescribed curriculum. There are seven types of curriculum. The first is the recommended curriculum. And these are recommended curriculum. Uh, gov the government agency, sila lang yung pwede mag Do not know how to use the curriculum guide, even the K to 12 you know, curriculum. A very nice curriculum, the, the best curriculum ever uh, that I have seen you know, in the Philippines, na curriculum ng government, prescribed curriculum by the government. This is very nice, but the problem is uh, most schools, private schools, do not know how to use this. Kasi nga, Hindi nagtatapos doon having a copy of this. We have to make curriculum mapping. Can you hear me? Yes, Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma okay. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. Akala ko e Okay, crystal clear. The first, uh, how do we use this? We need to make curriculum mapping. Imamap natin yan. Imamap, uh, curriculum, curriculum mapping is very important. No? Uh, uh, across the, the subjects and even domains of development. Per quarter. Bawat quarter, so dapat may imamapa natin kung ano yung ituturo natin based on the prescribed curriculum. Okay? And then here, we can also uh, in enhance the prescribed curriculum by, uh, you know, yung, we have to uh, ito yung articulate, give more articulation on the curriculum content, especially performance standards. What is articulation? Clear statement of the concept and skills values to be learned per program, like nursery, nursery one, nursery two, kindergarten. Uh, example, example of this, for uh, content uh, area, na? or content, uh, yung content area niya, or sub, the subject is mathematics under cognitive domain. Dito tayo sa, here on mathematics. Okay, so what is the content, uh, curriculum content? Uh, awareness and understanding of ge geometrical shapes in the environment. That is the, curricul the curriculum area or content. What is the performance standard for nursery under this? Identify and associate basic plane shapes in the environment. Like 
you close open parenthesis, the basic shapes, what are the basic shapes? Circle, triangle, uh, square, rectangle. You add star because this is very interesting to young children. So five stars now. No, or if you want, you can add other. It depends upon the learner. The, the curriculum content no, must be contextualized. No? So based from the uh, palagi pa rin, always think of the learners. Even if we have this curriculum guide or prescribed curriculum, is still always go back to the learners. Think of the learners, their need for learning. Okay. Um, and then for nursery too, the same statement of performance standard, but you, you have to indicate ano yung mga yon, yung difference of, of learning this standard from nurseries. Dapat kitang kita yung distinct uh, difference. No? So uh, concepts uh, mentioned in nursery one, then you add other concepts, uh, other uh, uh, shapes. Like, ano yung idadagdag natin? Oval, oblong, um, diamond, uh, crescent shape, or other shapes. So, ten, ten shapes. Okay na yan for nurses. Now, kindergarten. Kung so, meron pa rin, the same, the same pa rin, no? Uh, learning the basic shapes, but there is another higher, no? Kailangan there higher, we call that articulation and balance of the curriculum content, balance and articulation of the curriculum content. So, uh, hindi lang dapat hanggang dun sa identify plain shapes. Uh, identify and differentiate, differentiate between plain shape and solid shapes. You can already teach solid shapes to kindergarten children, five-year-old. Uh, solid shapes that are uh, available in the environment of the child. Nakapag itinuro mo, it's part of their life. Example, ball. The shape of a ball is a sphere, not circle. Now, this is part, di ba? Nakikita natin everywhere. So they must be able to, sa kindergarten la, hindi na pwede sabihin na a ball is cir circle. The, the shape of a ball is circle. That is only for nursery. Sa kindergarten na, is fear na dapat. No? But able, dapat na they can, you have, they have to differentiate plain shape and solid shape through uh, materials in their environment, in the home and school. Like egg, the shape of an egg. It's for nursery that is oval, but for kindergarten, older children, that is already oval. No? Is this meaningful? Is this meaningful, useful to the learners? Yes, kasi kinakain nila yan every day. No? Uh, cylinder shape. Cylinder is everywhere. The shape of most tumbler, tumbler is cylinder. More shape of glasses, cylinder yan. So, hindi ba pwedeng kaya na ba, kaya na ba yun ng kindergarten? Yes, because children at this age uh, have, you know, a great capacity to learn. So, don't ever uh, underestimate the power of the brain of children. And uh, I would like to share to you the, the research... Uh, uh, findings, research studies of Benjamin Bloom. No? We know Benjamin Bloom as the father of the Bloom's taxonomy of learning. He studied the brain development of children to adults for 20 years, so from zero to 20. And based from his findings, 50% of the total develop the total intellectual development of the child has been uh, uh, gained at age four. Remember, fifty percent of the total intellectual brain development of a child has been attained or developed at age four, and another third the child had gained another. 30% at age 8. 
So 50 plus 30 is 80. So what is the meaning of this? The greatest amount or percentage of brain development takes place during early childhood years. So let us not underestimate no, the power of the brain of children to learn. They have great capacity to learn, but be sure that these concepts and skills values are useful and meaningful to them. Something that they can see in the home, in school, and in the community. Yun lang yun, that is the, the, the thing that we have to, to uh, take note. Kailangan meaningful and useful to them. Huwag tayong magturo ng concepts and skills na hindi naman nakakatulong sa kanila. Wala nang meaning. Like yung iba nagpapamemorize ng uh, memorize ng pagkahaba-habang mga tula no, at the age of 3 or 4. Uh, na ang magulang naman, tuwang-tuwa naman, ay ang galing! Memorize niya ang mahabang tula. But what is the May meaning ba yun sa kanya? Naintindihan niya ba yun? Yung minememorize niya? So that is useless. Or teaching the children, the, the child uh, at four na counting one to 100 or what? Is that meaningful to the child? No, it's useless. So these concepts that are meaningful and useful to them. Something that they see you know, and observe. Okay, so after making the curriculum map, articulation of the performance standards, then make now the progress report checklist and the progress report card. See, the, prog the contents of the progress report card must jive with the curriculum and even the progress report checklist. Ito po yun. So this can be done through workshop, another session, but a face-to-face -face session, not, uh, not uh, via webinar and series. And we need time to do this. And ito yung magandang pwede natin gawin. The curriculum is already here. The spiritual development and values formation is very good. Methodist talaga siya. So this is what we, we need. Uh, yung spiritual, concrete, uh, ano ito, written uh, curriculum of the spiritual development. So we can, we use this Harris uh, curriculum, but we have, we, we should have a workshop on how to utilize it. Okay. Next. Next po. Okay, types and contents of uh, the module. Ito na po. <laughs> <laughs> yung hina, hini, nyo. Okay, module is one of the written curriculum. Na? Uh, written curriculum, yan. You know, an instructional material like like uh, uh, lesson plan, syllabus. Ito, yung, even textbook is a written curriculum. No, so module. But what is the difference of module to that of lesson plan? It's different because the module is complete complete, uh, must detail, you know, the <clears throat> detail, particularly the topics, complete na na, na the topics and skills and values that you want the learners to learn are there already, just read it, no? okay, whereas in lesson plan, no, wala yan, basta nilagay lang yung topic, same, tapos na, okay, but in here you have to, to write, you no, know, the uh, focus concepts na tinatawag or content of the topic okay and then the learning activities activity based detailed na hindi hindi yung hindi yung parang lesson plan na yung teacher and then pupil activity no activity based na? so activity based na for the learners and this just indicate the steps the mechanics on how to do it okay so ito yun and then even the the assessment tool is there complete na no na andun na lahat yun ang ibig sabihin ng module so so far this is the best kind of written instructional material uh, for learning okay
Okay, so what are the types of, the, there are only two types, the self-learning module. This is suited for independent reader of learners. Remember, there are levels of readers, yung uh, frustrated, uh, what poor reader, frustrated, independent, no, learner. So, kasi the, the sole user of this is the learner. So, once the child reads the, the, the module, he, could, he or she could read and at the same time understand. Hindi pwede yung nakabasa lang, hindi naman naintindihan. Hindi pwede yung ganun. Kailangan independent readers sila. Yung pagbinasa na nila, naintindihan nila kung ano yung binabasa. So, kaya nilang gawin yan. So, this is now the problem of deaf ed. Baka, kasi what they did was self-learning module from from uh, kindergarten to to high school definitely for primary grades they cannot no hirap pa especially grade 1 kaya ang mga magulang sino ang nawindang-windang sa sa module sa nang deaf ed magulang no di ba mga magulang ang mga sumasagot because uh, most of our learners in the public school are not independent readers no kaya this is suited for Kumbaga, bright, bright learners, self-learning uh, module. Okay, next. Uh, teaching learning module, suited for classroom instruction or home-based learning modality. No? So the parent, the teacher, or any adult is the user of these learning materials. And this is what we did. No? Ito yung gagawin ninyo. At ito yung ginawa ng mga deaconesses dito sa conference namin, the teaching learning module. Okay, next. Contents of the module, okay. The unit of study, the theme, the intended learning outcomes. Where will you get the intended learning outcomes from the recommended curriculum, prescribed curriculum? Okay, just copy the performance uh, Standards. Hindi ko na po makita, Sir Noel. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Then learning competencies. Then the con learning contents, specific concepts and skills, no, and values to be learned, taken from references, no, if, if possible from OBE outcomes based, no, education textbooks. Most of our textbooks now are OBE and in modular style or form. You know? And then the learning activities, be sure that they are child-friendly based activities with computer-aided instruction you know? uh, equipment to be used. And then the assess learning outcome or assessment, of course, observable. In the preschool, 100% uh, and ito, way of assessing the child is through observation, through their performance and product. Less on measurable on written. No, ang written lang is for cognitive and language uh, the domains of development. So that is just 20%. But 100% is observable through the checklist. Now, in the elementary and high school, I think this is 40 to 60, your performance and product. No? So, uh, kasi mas mahalaga na sa atin ngayon yung product. Because the highest level of learning now is creativity, product. No? Na wala na yung hanggang sa uh, ano lang, yung evaluation. It's more on creativity or product through their product and performance okay now next next topic okay guidelines now guidelines in writing the kindergarten modules okay of course create a theme per module based on social studies and science unit of study okay create yung theme may, dapat may theme yan okay refer to the standard-based curriculum that you are using. Ano ba yung ginagamit nyo na curriculum? If, do you have no, a uh, curriculum? Yung written curriculum or prescribed curriculum? Kung textbook curriculum, ay hindi po yun. No? Reference lang po natin yan. No? 
it's not the the textbook or the workbooks okay and then copy the performance standards and or learning uh, uh, competencies per content or curriculum standard or unit of study so next next slide then write the specific concepts skills and values to be learned okay so in writing the concepts brief and concise no? hindi yung mahabang statement uh, and when you when you write a what you concept for children something that they can understand understand you know in their point of view remember children are very literal you know and uh, they can only uh, understand words that they can see they've experienced you know? so be sure that the concepts are clearly stated in simple words that the the children could understand kung ano na yung isinulat mo doon yun na yung sasabihin mo pag itinuro mo sa bata yun ang uh, that is how you write the concepts okay so use simple words concise and developmentally appropriate concepts under the pre pre operational stage huh? uh it would, uh, this pre operational stage they cannot think logically hindi pa nila yung yung logical reasoning wala pa yun hindi pa nila masyado maintindihan so be, be sure na talagang level ng kanilang pagka pagkakaunawa example yung nabasa ko yung depth ed uh, curriculum on giving of awards bookworm curriculum award <laughs> natawa ako nung nabasa ko yun eh in the in the depth yung sa depth ed curriculum yung giving of awards no every quarter you can give an award like uh, bookworm uh, award eh pag ibsang ba ang bata ang naka nakabasa noon aba yung libro ay may uod literal yun no kaya eh, eh what well, that is not how we uh, we mean by bookworm so a reader no lover of books sa atin adults but not to children so don't ever uh, ano ito um uh, uh, use that as an award or you know i, yung mga mahilig magbasa ay wag na wag yun ang gamitin sa preschool yung bookworm award no uh, loves reading enjoys reading much better than bookworm award kasi baka ayaw ng bata na yun kasi ang isipin niya may uod ang libro okay next Then formulate child-friendly and parent-friendly learning activities and play-based approach, no? With develop with application of developmentally appropriate practices in early childhood education, which support the principles of child growth and development, no? Okay, I, I just uh, copied this from the DepEd curriculum. The DepEd curriculum is very nice, especially explanation of the, of the what do you call this, the curriculum framework. Napakaganda, but contents hindi na masyado. No? Far better yung prescribed curriculum by Harris. Okay, so ano ibig sabihin ng developmentally appropriate practices? As I have mentioned a while ago, use simple words you know, uh, based on the level of understanding of the learners. Activities that are suited for the learners based on their development, their physical, social, emotional, and other aspects of growth. So yun ang ibig sabihin in the form of play. Again, play means anything that the children do with freedom, with enjoyment, satisfaction, and fulfillment. This is play to them. Okay, next. Okay. <clears throat> when teaching the subjects under cognitive domains of development, we use the integrated approach in teaching. But integrated approach in teaching is 
under subject-centered curriculum design. No? It's all right to use integrated kasi holistic siya, eh, holistic approach. So when teaching subjects, we use integrated, you know, like social studies, mathematics, language, okay, and uh, communication. So kaya yung approach natin, pag nagturo tayo ng subjects na integrated na talaga siya. Okay? So next slide. So kaya ito. So integrated approach is anchored to broad fields or interdisciplinary design model under subject-centered curriculum that draws around themes and integration, which is the same as thematic design. Yeah? Broad fields, so interdisciplinary. So the K-12 curriculum is, uh, this is their design, broad fields. Okay. Uh, interdisciplinary uh, in high school hindi nakatulad noon na pag grade uh, 7 or first year uh, basic mathematics or fundamentals of mathematics second year algebra third year geometry then fourth year physics hindi na po ngayon uh, across interdisciplinary na uh, pinapag-aralan na lahat no from from grade 1 to grade 12 all the different fields for example in mathematics no? across disciplines na across the subjects language is more of intradisciplinary no? kasi uh, within within uh, that discipline magkaka related sila so intradisciplinary it's not inter it's intra so try to analyze the k-12 curriculum yun po yun it's highly broad fields design no? interdisciplinary design kasi subject-centered design curriculum ang k-12 okay next Okay, music and movements, creative arts and dramatics, spiritual development and values formation are integrated in the learning activities related to the curriculum contents of the cognitive and language domains of development. So we integrate this. <clears throat> Do not forget this. This is very uh, ano ito? <clears throat> meaningful to children, interesting to children. Ito ang dapat na hindi mawala sa curriculum natin. Music and movement, creative arts and creative thematics, and spiritual development. You integrate this in uh, the cognitive no? uh, uh, domain of development, specifically in social studies and science. Okay, next. Okay, last Thank you, Lord. Last, this is our last, okay? You sample, I will now present the sample module one written by, by uh, teacher Jemari. So, dahil siya ang nagsulat, syempre siya ang mag-present. Okay? Uh, si Jemari po, nasaan na siya? Uh, Jemari, DSS Jemari Obidosa. Okay. Uh, Jemari, teacher Jemari, where are you? Jemari Obidosa. Teacher, okay. ito po ako. Ayan, ito po yung aming Jaconisa. Okay. And, oh, sige. Okay po. Good evening po sa ating lahat. And ako po si... Good evening. And good evening po. Ako po si Teacher Jem Obedoza from Baguio Episcopal area. So I will share with you po yung module week one na ginawa po namin. So first po, good evening po. Ayan. So yung first po natin is yung unit study or team, which is the team for module one is I love myself. So, ayun po yung una nating tuturo sa mga bata is about themselves, yung sarili po nila, ang matutunan po nila. So, per week po yun, and nag-base po kami yung sa team po niya sa social studies and science po. And nag, um, nag, dinerive po namin ito sa Harris Curriculum. 
So, ayun po. Second is the learning competencies or performance standard. So, this is per subject po, based on school curriculum. And specifically po sa preschool curriculum of Harris Memorial College from our alma mater. And also from the progress report checklist from Dr. Lane. So, ayun po. And in the learning competencies also, and okay lang po, it is divided per development. Yan po nasabi na po ni um, Teacher Lane kanina, yung cognitive development. And then po yung science or social studies. And next is the emergent reading and communication is skills. Next is slide po. Thank you po. And... And then po yung math. And next is the creative development, the visual arts, music, ipakibaba po. And lastly is the Christian values formation. So, ayan po. And third is learning contents. So these are the basic concepts, skills, and values that learners are expected to learn within the week. Kasi per week po siyang binibigay yung ating module. So learning contents are derived from the books we use. And from Teacher Lane also, kasi siya po yung editor namin. And also from Harris Curriculum. Ayan. So ayan po. And lastly is the learning activities. So sa learning activities, so pakitaas po muna. Thank you. Uh, meron po siyang date from Monday to Friday. Meron po siyang um, learning materials needed na kailanganin po ng parents and the integrated learning activities. This, the, the integrated learning activities are designed by the teacher to bring about or create the conditions for learning. So some learning activities stimulate experiential learning Others mobilize conceptual thinking. And yun po, ito yung nagmamotivate sa kanila para mag-aral. And learning activities include the date, yun ang sabi ko na po. Ayan. And learning activities such as YouTube viewing. Ayan, gustong-gusto po kasi ng mga bata ngayon ng manood sa YouTube. Ayan, pero dapat po yung age appropriate and um, alam po natin na yung content po is akma doon sa ituturo po natin. Engaging games, which are play-based approach, and that can parent can facilitate at home. Na hindi lang po sa, sa school pwedeng maglaro yung mga bata, pwede din po sa bahay maglaro yung mga bata, at meron po silang matutunan doon. And more creative activities that are appropriate and suited with the interest of the learners and can easily execute at home. So, pakibaba na lang po para po makita po nila yung sample of module. Thank you po. So, tatlo po siya. Bali, my first session, second session, and third session po siya. So, na-divide po siya sa tatlo. And doon po sa in-between po niya, meron din pong snack time for the learners to take a rest and to take a nap. Ayan po. So, ayan lamang po. Thank you and God bless po sa atin. Okay. Next presenter is uh, Teacher uh, Frian Padron. Uh, on the implementation of the module. Si Frian po. Frian? Good evening po. Okay. Naririnig niyo po ba ako? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma ma Good evening po. Uh, I am Deaconess Frian Franz Padron from Baguio Episcopal Area. At ito po, at tinap po ako ni Doc Lane to share with you. Okay po, naririn po ba? Okay. Tinap po ako ni Doc Lane to share with you yung the process in the implementation 
or execution of the teaching learning modules. So, paano po ba namin na-utilize yung teaching learning module na tinuro po ni Teacher Lane sa amin? So, dito po sa place namin, um, diniscuss namin itong teaching learning module na ito during parent-teacher orienta orientation at ginagawa po ito, di ba, during bago po mag-start ang school year. So, it was yes. discussed earlier by Conis Jemari na meron pong mga designated lessons na nakalagay doon sa teaching learning modules from Monday, Tuesday hanggang Friday. At binubuo po ito ng tatlong sessions. Kaya in-explain in po namin sa and diniscuss namin sa mga parents na ito po ay hindi siya hindi siya self learning module kundi teaching learning module na activity based siya so ito pong teaching learning module na ito um, ang isa po sa mga special feature po nito na tinuro ni Doc Lynn sa amin ay uh, useful siya hindi lamang po ngayong pandemic na wala po tayong face-to-face -face na ginagamit lang ito ng mga parents or guardians na magtuturo sa mga bata. Kundi, useful po din siya kapag magpa-face-to-face -to -face na tayo. Sa pagbabalik na tayo sa normal. At kaya ito po yung isa sa magandang feature nitong teaching learning module nito na pwedeng gamitin ng mga parents na ituturo sa bahay. And at the same time, pwede din pong gamitin ng natin mga nating mga teachers sa school kapag pwede na po tayong mag face to face. So after that na na discuss po namin during the parent teacher orientation itong teaching learning module na to, syempre eh, gumawa po kami ng group chat for the parents and guardians kung sino po yung mga magtuturo ng sa bata ng nitong teaching learning module na to for announcements at doon din po namin sinesend yung link ng videos uh, sinabi po ni Dikonis Jemari kanina na may mga may YouTube videos na nakalagay doon sa teaching learning module so doon po namin sinesend yung link para ma download po or ma-play po kaagad ng mga magtuturo po sa mga bata. And dito po sa place namin dahil hindi nga po ganun ka-stable yung internet at hindi po lahat ay mayroong sariling wifi. Uh, ang ginagawa ko po if the parents or guardians would wish to ask for a copy from me yung mga videos sina-download ko po ito at sineshare po sa kanila para wala na pong problema na maituturo po ng ayos yung teaching learning module na ito. And then, uh, dinidistribute po namin itong teaching learning module weekly on a scheduled day. At hindi lamang yung... Hindi lamang yung module yung dinidistribute po namin, kundi meron din yung, uh, binibigay din po namin yung mga instructional materials na nakalagay doon, like yung models, realias, or mga printed pictures, instructional materials na gagamitin ng mga parents na ito pang turo sa mga bata para hindi na po nila problema na mai Uh, maituro yung certain topics doon sa teaching learning module na yon And then, bilang mga teacher naman, po, ang ginagawa po namin dito sa sa amin, uh, nung safer pa it dito sa Isabela ang COVID dahil zero case pa lang po noon, uh, once a week ay pinupuntahan po namin individually yung mga bata for follow-ups. So, ano pong ginagawa namin kapag pumupuntahan po namin yung mga bata sa mga bahay nila? Individually po ito, ah, once a week or um, discretion po ng school kung... Ba't wala akong video? Okay. Meron po. Discretion po ng school kung um, kailan po nila imimit yung mga bata. Basta po, at least meron pong follow-up para sa mga bata na ituturuan po namin. So, ang ginagawa po namin pag pinuturuan namin mga bata ay i-review namin yung module sa kanila na tinuro ng mga parents nila. 
And kung ano din, din po yung araw na na-schedule na pagpunta namin doon, bukod doon sa tinuro ng mga parents, yun po yung mismong tinuturo namin sa kanila. And then we give worksheets for them to answer and doon sa workbooks for supplementary para po sa kanilang mastery. And then um, tinuturo po namin yung mga tinetake note ng mga parents or guardians na kasi may mga nagsabi, teacher, eh, ano, matanda na ako masyado. Hindi ko alam ituro itong topic na ito. Ganun. May mga ganun pong instance na feedback ng mga parents or guardians. Kaya sabi po namin, itake note ito yung mga hindi nila masyadong maintindihan na topic na para ituro. At kapag pinuntahan po namin for follow-up, yung mga anak nila ay maituturo po namin ito sa kanila. So, yun po. And then, ngay- ngayon po, for dahil nga po tumataas yung cases po dito sa Isabela, na isa po kami sa pag-individual na pagpunta sa mga bata. Pero we continue giving our modules and we are doing our best para we para makahanap ng paraan para ma-reach out pa rin po sila. And I think yung sa school po na tinuturuan ni Pignis Jemary and home church po ni McLean ay nag-online teaching po sila. So yun lamang po yung sharing ko. Thank you. Thank you, Teacher Priyan. Uh, next is uh, Teacher Tina in his uh, Banyes will present um, the feedback of the parent users of the module. Teacher oh, Tina. Hello okay. Hello po. Magandang po sa ating lahat. Uh, naatasan po akong magbahagi ng mga feedbacks ng parents o guardian tungkol sa teaching learning module na ginagamit po namin dito sa school namin this school year. So, bale, pinagsama-sama ko na po yung ibang mga uh, feedbacks ng mga parents kasi po, iisa lang naman yung thought na sinasabi nila. Ang una po, sabi nila, maganda ang module kasi nakalagay na lahat ng gagawin doon. Pati mga visuals, uh, ay provided kaya hindi na daw sila nahihirapang mag-print at mag-prepare at yung mga materials ay nandun na sa mga bahay-bahay nila kaya hindi na po sila nahihirapang maghanap. Ang alawa po, um, yung iba naman po, uh, ang hinaing nila medyo nahihirapan sila sa part na may YouTube or online viewing lalo na yung mga lolo at lola na guardian. Kasi uh, syempre hindi daw nila masundan dahil nga sa technology po, pero na-solve naman po iyon dito sa school namin. Pangatlo po, uh, meron din naman pong nagsabi na uh, nag enjoy ang anak nila sa lesson, lalo na kapag ginawa nila yung step-by-step step na process ng teaching learning module na lesson sa isang araw. Then yung pang-apat po, uh, maraming mga activities na nakalagay sa module na kayang gawin ng mga bata at natututo po talaga yung mga bata. So yun lang man po yung mga sharing at mga feedbacks ng mga parents po dito sa school. Salamat po. Thank you very much, uh, Gemma, Tina, and Frian. So that ends the session for tonight's webinar. Uh, Doon po nagtatapos. No? <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Salamat. Thank okay. you, ma. Good night. Okay. Good night, ma. Meron ba? Meron pa tayo si Miki? Blessed night. <laughs> okay. Meron pa. I think we still have uh, other activities after. So, meron Thank pa you, ma. So, Thank you. Thank you, ma. <laughs> I think we have a few minutes for for open forum. Open forum, yeah. Okay, where is it now? Meron po ba a question? Dr. Estrella Benaventura will facilitate the forum. The yes. open forum. Dr. Estrell? Hmm. 
Dr. Benaventura. Wala po. Can you just facilitate, uh, Juan? Dr. Homer? Okay, so we have some time for open forum. Uh, do you have any questions? It should be in the chat uh, because we have instructed you to uh, write your questions on the chat group. But I see no, no questions that are posted. So I think because we are limited by time, we, uh, I, we, I'm calling on Dr. Framer Christy Melia for the awarding of certificates. Dr. Melia. Good evening, everyone. We are indeed very grateful that we have resource persons who are very knowledgeable on the subject matter. They are also the crafters of our module. They have also time to uh, implement, uh, opportunity to implement the module and talk to our uh, uh, parents and uh, guardians. So they have first-hand information about the module that we have, uh, that they have already used and that they are sharing with us tonight. Um, Sige. So can we flash now our uh, certificates? Sister <laughs> Noel. Oh, oh Sister Noel. So we will give certificates of appreciation to our resource persons and uh, presenters. No, We have Dr. Lynn. We have Deaconess uh, uh, Christina, Deaconess Gemery, and Deaconess Frian as well. So we are just waiting for the flashing of uh, our certificate so that you will also you will also be able to read it as I read loudly our uh, certificate of appreciation. Or we may request MJ to to share screen yeah. certificates. Okay. MJ. Certificate. Dr. Famer, nababasa mo na? Ay, sandali lang po. Uh, <laughs> nice Ito sandali. ang ating mga challenges. All right. So, for our first certificate, let me read the citation. Philippine Association of Methodist Schools, Colleges, Universities, and Seminaries, or this is the PAM, the PAM schools, is honored to present this certificate of appreciation to Deaconess Lane Tandayo Tomamang, PhD, for her invaluable contribution as a resource person in the webinar on crafting, na wala, uh, crafting, the kindergarten modules, mm -hmm. the UMC or the United Methodist Church Child Centered Curriculum Design Model via Zoom, given this sixth day of April 2021. Signed by the Palm School's President, Priscilla Buya, PhD. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Congrats. Okay, so for our next certificate of appreciation. <laughs> so we have another certificate of appreciation given to Deaconess Christina I. Banyes for her invaluable mm -hmm. contribution as presenter on the feedback from the parent users of the module pilot testing in the webinar on crafting the kindergarten modules, the United mm -hmm. Methodist Church Child-Centered Curriculum Design Model via Zoom 
given the 6th day of April 2021. Signed by our PAMSCUS President, Priscilla C. Viuya, PhD. The next certificate is a certificate of appreciation given to Deaconess Gemary mm. E. Obidoza mm. for her invaluable yes. contribution as a presenter on the, con the, the content of the kindergarten modules in the webinar on crafting the kindergarten modules, the United Methodist Church Child-Centered Curriculum Design Model via Zoom and given the sixth day of April 2021, signed by Priscilla Sibuya, PhD, Kamskus uh, President. And the last certificate of appreciation is given to Deaconess Freyan Franz M. Pardon for her invaluable contribution as presenter on the process in the implementation of the kindergarten module on the webinar on crafting the kindergarten modules, the United Methodist Church Child-Centered Curriculum Design Model via Zoom, given the sixth day of April, 2021. Thank you very much to our resource persons tonight. Dr. Christy Manyabat, President of Harris Memorial College and Vice President of PAM Schools for the Manila Episcopal Area, will now give her closing remarks. I would like Dr. to believe that each one of us was blessed and inspired and challenged with the uh, input shared with us by Dr. Lane Tanda Yutumama, an expert in early childhood education, who shared with us valuable, useful, and helpful inputs on how to craft the kindergarten modules for use of our UMC-related preschools in the three Episcopal areas. This webinar on early childhood education was conceived in response to the expressed need of respondents who filled out the PAM school survey disseminated to them. Uh, they expressed the need for a centralized resource or instructional materials. And we started with this webinar. And this is the reason why we have this webinar on crafting kindergarten modules based on the UMC Child-Centered Curriculum Design Model shared with us by Dr. Lane together with our uh, three deaconesses. We are so proud of you. Uh, deaconesses Jimmy, Frian, and Christina. You are doing a good job in the area of early childhood education. And of course, with the guidance, with the very able guidance of Dr. Lane Tandayu. During the meeting of the PAMSCUS officers recently uh, about the uh, finalization of this webinar, which we have just finished, we also talked about initially about the continuous uh, writing of kindergarten modules. And we approved it in principle. And I am so glad and I am so grateful to Dr. Lane for really uh, acknowledging and using and promoting the Harris Preschool Curriculum, which is primarily, primarily intended for preschools connected with the United Methodist Church in the Philippines. And we heard about its usefulness, about its effectivity from our three uh, deaconess presenters. So uh, I read in the chat box uh, a, com a positive comment from a, a professor, from teacher Lovelyn uh, Blanco, a faculty of Harris, 
um, while Dr. Lane was giving her input that she felt challenged to really uh, uh, find time, dedicate herself in writing kindergarten modules. Dr. Lane, meron na isang na, na challenge dito sa Harris. And actually, Dr. Ruby and I talked about this this afternoon before we started our webinar. If there could be a possibility for Harris Memorial College and the UMC through PAM schools to continue working on writing kindergarten modules that could be used by our preschools connected with the UMC. Let us pray for it. Let us yeah. talk about it. Let us plan about it and make it happen. Because as shared by Jemari, uh, were you Jemari, that these uh, kindergarten modules will not only be used during this pandemic, but even during face-to-face. -face. So this is really very much needed and very useful. Let us pray that God, as much as God has blessed us tonight for the webinar, that God would continue to inspire all PAM schools officers and those who will be involved in the writing of kindergarten modules because part of the initial plan of the PAM schools officers is to have it published. And it could be a joint sponsorship of Harris Memorial College using the Harris Preschool Curriculum as often uh, as cited and used by Dr. Lane and by our three deaconess presenters. So the PAMSCUS officers, we will continue working because we are inspired, we are capacitated, and we are blessed. And I pray and hope that all participants uh, have gained a lot and are inspired also with this webinar. The Ministry on Kindergarten Education will continue. And as mentioned by Dr. Lane, we will continue uh, igniting this legacy, uh, Wesleyan way of doing education through our preschool children, because our preschool children are our future, because they continue learning, relearning, and unlearning from Alvin Tapler as an introduction of the input of Dr. Lane. And so this webinar is a product of all the efforts of the PAMCOS officers, all those who were involved, and our prayer for God's blessings. We were all blessed. And to God, we bring back all praises and glory. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very Thank much. You, Dr. Christie. Thank you. To our close, may I make an announcement that each participant will be sent an evaluation form, which you will fill up, fill out, and uh, return to the organizers. Uh, of course, it's there uh, how you will do it, and you will receive your certificate of uh, attendance and participation in return. Let's draw this beautiful evening to a close with a prayer by Bishop Rodolfo Juan, resident bishop of the Davao Episcopal area. Bishop Juan. Friends, as we come to a close of this uh, webinar, we lift unto him our utmost praise and adoration for what he has done to us. Praise God for the leadership of uh, uh, Sister Connie, and praise God for all the participants. Let us offer unto him our praise. O most gracious and loving God, we offer unto you our gratitude for bringing your children together for this webinar. Thank you for the ministry of PAM schools. Thank you, Lord, for the... Uh, Association of Methodist Schools and Colleges and Universities here in the Philippines. Salamat kayo ginoo for the leadership of Dean Connie and Lord all the officers of PAM schools. Thank you that today you have brought your children together. Praise you Lord for all the participants 
from the Philippine Central Conference in the Baguio Episcopal Area, the Manila Episcopal Area, and in the Davao Episcopal Area. Lord, may all the things that we've learned will redound to the uh, continuing development of the kindergarten schools, O oh God, of our United Methodist Church. We uh, pray that you will continually bless the uh, basic education institutions of our church. We pray, O oh Lord, for these new modalities of learning. We pray, Lord, for the kinder pupils, O oh Lord, but most especially their teachers, the deaconesses, and the young people of our church. The teachers, O oh Lord. Thank you for our resource speaker, Deaconess uh, Lane Tumamang. We praise you, Lord, for all the things that she imparted to us. Also for Dr. Estrell Buenaventura, O oh Lord, and even our very own leaders, Dr. Vuya, Dr. Christie, and Dr. Adiansar. Lord, salamat sa inyo sa lahat ng inyong ginawa at patuloy pang gagawin. We look forward, Lord, to a future full of hope. In, the, in our kindergarten schools, that with the leadership of PAM schools, we will continue to move forward, to level up, and Lord, be able to nurture the kindergarten pupils, O oh Lord, the young people of our community. This is a great responsibility for us. And we thank you because you have called us to this very wonderful responsibility, O oh Lord. Help us to be faithful and help us to be fruitful as we work together for your honor and glory. We look forward, Lord, to more webinars like this. We look forward to your abundant blessings upon us. O oh Christ, our risen, our loving, and our living Lord. In the name of of Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And now, dear friends, receive the abundant blessings of God, our loving Father, He who loves the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son. The assurance of salvation through Christ, who suffered for us at the cross of Calvary, but He rose again from the dead. And may the empowerment, the wisdom, and the peace of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us and upon us all, both now and forevermore. Amen and Amen. Thank Good night. You. Thank Dr. you for Dr. Homer. Dr. Homer, this is yeah. Dr. Homer. Meron Thank tayong you. photo, CMJ, si bago tayo mag tonight. Uh -huh. MJ? Yes. P, can we give them a copy of my lecture? Yun ang maraming nagre-request. Yes. And the sample module. Yeah, we can do that. Thank um, you. Thank you, Doc. MJ, pwede ka mag-photo? Yes, ma'am. Pwede po. Sabihin mo, bigyan mo ako kami ng ano. Okay, ma'am. Ang sample module. Oh, may hutay ko ng camera. First slide po. Three. Yung camera na camera. Second slide po. One, two, three. Third slide po. Oh, pwede po nang cam. Thank you. Fourth pa po. Fourth pa po. Um, yan. Okay. Oh, 
Fifth slide po. Walang slide po. Last slide po. One, two. Thank you po. Good Thank you, Dr. Famer, Dr. Eunice, of course, our president, Dr. Biuya. Thank you, Dr. Famer. Officers. And of course, a message ni Bishop Seri at saka sa prayers ni Bishop Torrio and Bishop Juan. At sa lahat sa inyong mga participants. Isesend sa inyo yung uh, input ni Dr. Lane at saka yung sharing ng tatlong Deaconess Presenters. Uh, MJ, magagawa natin yan, ano? Yes, ma'am. Isasabay po sa certificate po. Uh, okay. So, pag sinabit nyo po yung evaluation form ninyo, at saka kayo makakatanggap ng certificate at saka nung uh, resource materials na na-share kanina. Salamat sa inyo ng mga participants. Salamat po. Thank you so much, ma'am. At sa muling makikita-kita natin. Thank, Thank you, so Dr. Christy. God bless, Dr. Christy. Thank, Thank you. 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 Thank you.